Yo guys, so welcome back to the channel. This video, I'm gonna be doing a bit of an overview and we're gonna be looking at my brand new Vetus eSummit VRX. So pretty excited about this year's e-bikes. I think it's been a step in the right direction from last year's bikes, especially with the color options that you get this year. With the VRX models, you'll see in a second, the green, sparkly green color is amazing. I'm gonna do a bit of a walk through the spec so you guys can see what the bike looks like, a close look at some of the parts I'm running, and quite a big change for me in terms of sizing. So I know a lot of people watch our channel for deciding on bike sizes and bike specs and stuff like that. So I think you'd be quite surprised as to what size I've actually gone for this year or what size both me and Amanda have gone for. It's very different than what we've been riding in the past. Okay, so we'll walk through some of the specs on the bike. So this is the VRX, the top spec model that uh, Vetus offer in the e-bike range. We've got a RockShox Zeb Ultimate fork on the front with 170 mil travel with that Charger 2.1 damper in there. On the back, I have my preferred shock on there. So the bike actually comes with a RockShox Super Deluxe shock, an air shock, but I just like the way a coil feels on this bike. So I've got a DVO Jade shock on here with a special tune to suit this bike. So it's a little bit more heavily damped just to, to cope with the weight of the bike and how much the bike is actually going through. And I don't think it looks badass as well. Like the green, green on green, and a bit of red looks real, real smart. Shimano EP8 motor on here, driving the power with a 625 or 630 uh, watt battery. So it's a pretty beastly battery. It's not the smallest of bikes on the market. There are definitely lighter options, but this is like a full fat, do it all kind of rig. If you want to go on some big missions, big adventures, this thing is absolutely awesome for doing that. Shimano drivetrain this year. So we've got XT drivetrain, XT cassette. I think we've got a 34 tooth chainring on the front with a Shimano chain guide. My preferred pedals, which are Nukeproof Horizon clipless pedals. A Brandex dropper post, which is 170 mil. I think I will be changing this drop post in the future because my long legs, I think, need a bit more length. So maybe a 200, even maybe even bigger if I can get my hands on one. But 200 mil drop post from the previous as we ran with seems to suit me quite well. Cockpit at the front, we've got nuke proof bar and stem. So it's a 50 mil horizon stem, nuke proof horizon handlebars with a 20 mil rise and the 800 mil wide bars. So I wouldn't usually run 800 mil wide bars. I just haven't cut these down yet. This is how they come out of the box. Obviously, if you like running wider bars then you can just leave them as they are. For me, I personally will be cutting these down to 760, which is kind of like my preferred go-to handlebar width. Same with the stem as well. I'm quite interested to try a shorter stem on this bike. So it's got a 50 mil stem and it comes with a 50 mil stem, but I would quite like to try and see how the bike rides with a 35 mil stem. Because one thing I did last year, which I don't think I talked about was um, uh, I actually flipped my stem upside down to just to lower the front end a bit because when you're on an e-bike, especially in like say the e EWS on the power stages, you want to try and get as much weight over the front of the bike as you can to get as much traction as you can and balance your weight evenly over the, over the bike. And I felt that helped me quite a lot. So I probably will be trying that out this year. And while we're talking about getting your weight over the front of the bike and being in the right position on an e-bike, you, some of you guys might be shocked to know that I am just over six foot tall, six foot one-ish. So therefore, if you go off Vetus's size guide on their website, you should say that I would be on a, a large bike. But actually, this, to everyone's surprise, is a medium bike. I just felt a few months ago when I raced Amanda's e-Summit, because we had a bit of an um, electrical fault on my large bike, I rode her medium in the EWS. And I was actually quite blown away by how good the bike was and how good it felt for me. And it's actually quite ironic. There's a lot of pro riders now running smaller size bikes in the E-races and the EWS, which is quite fascinating because we're always told in this industry, like you need to get bigger bikes for more stability, more control, this and the other. But in fact, it seems like people are going back the opposite way. I know bikes have got bigger as a whole, but I was surprised to, to know when I asked a few people that they were actually on medium bikes rather than large bikes, which I the thought so yeah we're actually on medium bikes this year so it actually looks a little bit shorter than usual as it is but it feels amazing on the track ample amount of support i feel really balanced over both the front and the rear wheel can get traction grip and obviously with this thing being nearly 25 kilos i think out of the box it's about 24.8 kilos the thing grips like nothing else it's it's heavier than some e-bikes granted but the weight when it comes to e-bikes is mind-bending people are always 
saying that they need bigger brakes for their bike and stuff on, on the e-bikes and they've got big heavy bikes which is kind of true to an extent but with the the weight of the bike you can actually hit corners and sections of fast sections on track faster i've found because you have so much more grip because of the weight of the bike and the suspension works a lot better as well with the weight which is another thing i've found another change this year for vitas's e-bikes is the wheels so last year the wheels were actually dt swiss wheels this year we've kind of gone in-house and bikes come standard with the nuke proof horizon v2 wheel set which i've been running now for the past two years and a Again, faultless wheel, really good life on the bearings. I don't think I actually replaced the bearings all last year in the wheels that I had. The hub sounds really good if you want a loud, high engagement hub. These V2 hubs are really, really good. And you can obviously put a little bit of grease in there as well, hub grease, to quieten things down if you're not too keen on that loud buzzing noise. <laughs> My bike's a little bit dusty because I've been shredding it the past few days, but pretty cool. Uh, tires this year. We've got WT Vigilante on the front, so we've got a 2.5 29 on the front, tough high grip casing, and the back we've got a 2.4 WTB Judge. I just find that's a really good tyre for putting on the back of a bike. 27.5 wheel on the back, 29 on the front. So the mullet setup on these bikes obviously helps the bike in the steeper, more tighter terrain, just like whips round corners a lot better. I think it actually helps deliver the power better as well. Again, I'm not an e-bike engineer or expert, but I've heard from other people who have ran 29er e-bikes that they're a lot different to ride than a mullet. Okay, so I've flipped the bike around now. The braking department, we've got dual piston Shimano XT brakes with 203mm rotors on there, as you can see heavy stopping power, Shimano XD cranks, a short mud hook and mud guard, I like the short one, looks quite cool. And one thing I've actually just noticed, sorry I forgot to mention before, these bikes actually come like frame protected from factory so there's no need for you to worry about going off and getting in like an Invisi frame kit or anything that's already done. One less thing to worry about, I literally when it turned up in the box I literally put the front wheel on, connected up the controls, put the handlebars on and literally went riding within half an hour. So they come pretty much built ready out of the box, which is pretty damn decent. Some nice tidy cables at the front. Probably could be a bit, little bit tidier, I reckon. Uh, Nuke proof grips. I quite like these Sam Hill grips. They're a little bit wider than the Vita grips that come on the bike. It's just a personal preference. Brand X uh, dropper activator lever. I run my controls here on the left for the e-bike, which is interesting because I know some people run it on the right. We've got fully internal cable routing, just keep it all away and hidden away and looking nice. WTB Silverado saddle in the medium width, which is always my go-to saddle. I find that quite comfortable for me. So we'll talk a little bit about geometry and angles and stuff, because I know a few angles in this bike. I don't know every single angle off by heart, but it's a fairly aggressive enduro bike. Got a 64 degree head angle, so kind of slack as far as things go, so it's kind of aggressive. And the actual seat tube angle uh, changes and it, uh, increases as the bikes get bigger in size. So what that does is it allows Vitas to have an average or as close to average like seat sag angle across the whole range, if that makes sense. So if they kept it the same, obviously when the bikes got bigger, that would be quite a big change. But they've accommodated for that and made it so it actually changes and averages out depending on what height you are. And that's pretty much it. That's kind of like my first like look at the new VRXC Summit. It's an absolute beast of an e-bike, depending on what you are after, because I know some people want kind of like lighter e-bikes with like smaller batteries and stuff. This is not that bike for you. This is a 24.8 kilo enduro do it all monster. Like if you want to do big days out on the bike, big all day adventures, multiple runs on downhill tracks or big days enduro in exploring, this is probably the bike for you. I'm going to do another video on kind of like some first ride style video so you guys can see the bike in action because I always like those kind of videos. I think you guys love it too when you can actually see the bike riding, especially if you're looking to make a decision on buying a bike. It's all well and good seeing pictures on a website, but sometimes it can tip the scales when you actually see the bike in motion on a trail and you can see all the bike working and stuff like that. It just becomes even more like exciting and enticing if you like. But I just think e-biking is the future. It's where everything's going. The amount of runs you can get in is insane. You guys will know if you've got e-bikes and if you haven't got an e-bike, then hopefully you'll get on the trend soon. And if you've got any questions about this e-bike or e-biking in general, pop 
the questions in the comments below and I'll get back to you and see you in the next video.